Bear a little, line upon line, precept upon precept, and that's how you build your theology. Amen. Not one verse. It can't be done that way. Let us turn over to, um, I'm going to jump back to Galatians 4 and 4. And but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, verse 5, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Who? How? <coughs> sons? and daughters of God? That's pretty amazing stuff. Pretty amazing son stuff. And because ye are sons, God hath set forth the spirit of his son in your hearts. Did you hear that? God has set forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying, Abba, Father. Therefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Jesus Christ. Infinite, per infinite purity knocks upon the door. Infinite purity is a perfect gentleman. Infinite purity will not push, will not shove, will not coerce, not like the devil does. Infinite purity woos, <coughs> protects, builds up, loves beyond understanding. You know, I think most of our problem is is that we really do believe that we know something. I really do believe that that's our biggest problem because we think we know something. We're not able to learn new and grow and understand more. It, it, it's just a terrible thing, but that's who it is. It's, it's a hard heart. That's how we are. Little children haven't been here long enough to get that way. So they gobble everything up like little sponges and they learn quickly. But why do you have to stop learning quickly? Why can't your mind still be like a child? Because we bind it down with all these preconceived notions and we think we know something and this is the way it's got to be or supposed to be. But we're not free enough to let go and let God. That's where it is. To let go and let God come to Him as He says like a little child. And Father, I don't know. I don't know how to go out. I don't know when to go out or when to come in. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But you do. But you do. Maybe you're supposed to go there. Maybe you're not supposed to go there. <clears throat> Maybe you get a, a real push to just pull the car over and start praying for somebody. Who knows? Maybe God's telling you to do something crazy. Like stop at the store and buy a gallon of milk and drop it off at some house and you don't even drink milk. I don't know. But God does things that don't make sense. So if you think it's crazy, it may be crazy to you. But we don't know. And if we start coming to everything like we don't really know, then think about how open you're going to be. Think about how open you would be. We talked about it in that song we just wrote, buy us free, right? Buy us free. What if we were really buy us free? What a better place this place would be.
Brothers and sisters, I do want to say, uh, I, I, I should close it now, but I want to say a couple more things. Um, Galatians 3 and chapter, chapter 3 and verse 23, it says, But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith. The faith, did you hear it? Which should afterwards be revealed. So, you know, you could take that word right there, I think, in verse 23, but before Jesus came, right? Isn't that faith there and Jesus synonymous? Jesus, brother, is the faith. If you have Jesus, you have the faith. It isn't your faith. It's his faith that's saving. You may have faith in Jesus, but it's Jesus' faith that's saving faith. And we have to have that. Because if you have that, you're fireproof. Do you understand that? You're fireproof. And God says that he is a consuming fire. And that was proved how many times in the Bible? The boys in the furnace, right? Moses in the burning bush. Can you imagine seven guys, I believe it was, that died throwing men into the, or just trying to get guys into the fire? They just got near the fire and they died. These guys walked around in the fire. And their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. Do you think God pays great dividends? <gasps> Look, you can't be hurt. And, and what does it matter if they take the body? And you have Christ. And He has you. That's the bigger thing. We always talk about having Christ. But we never talk about, does He have you? That's the next step. And we're good to go. You're good to go. I want to just jump down um, as I'm closing here. Oh, let me just read through this real quick because this isn't that much. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith, the faith of Christ Jesus. For as many of you has been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. And here we go. Verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. I feel like I want to dance. <laughs> there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. All one. No male, no female, no Gentile, no Jew, no Greek. We're all one in Christ Jesus. That sounds like no bias to me. Hello. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Are we heirs according to the promise? If Jesus has all of us, we are. If Jesus has all of us. Amen. Our closing song, brothers and sisters, will be, Oh, When Shall I See Jesus? 448. And I want to ask you to please, as you're singing this song and reading these words, I'm asking you to imagine that Jesus is coming and you're seeing Him. Sing it like you really mean it.
these early Advent hymns, you know, they, uh, they really believed in these words that they wrote. When they wrote them and when they sung them, they were looking for Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we also need to be the same way. We need to drop all these preconceived notions, let go of our biases, love our brothers and sisters, regardless of even if we don't like them. We need to love them. We need to love them. And only Jesus can make us love the way we really need to love. And it's agape love. That's what we need. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful message that you've given to us today because your Son is the one who's been lifted up this day and in this house. This is your house, Lord. And we've come here today to worship you, to lift up Jesus, and to thank you for giving us the gift that will never stop giving through all eternity, that Jesus is put on the flesh to make us brothers and sisters to raise us up and to bring us up. The little, the little pearl that slipped away and fell down has been picked up and placed up on high. In Christ we own everything and we are everything. We have nothing to give, but we have everything to gain in Christ Jesus and for His sake. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and you'll be dismissed.